So you've just got a new puppy or you're about to get a new puppy and you're worried about being able to manage your dog howling or barking or crying or yapping at night. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how you overcome that. Welcome back to Will and Mabel. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and on this channel, I help people become good quality, calm, consistent canine leaders that are able to raise perfect canine companions. So if you are new here, please click subscribe to join our amazing community that we're growing here on Will and Mabel. So this behavior of bringing a puppy home and trying to get them to settle in their room or in their crate or wherever it is that you want them to sleep at night moving forward and they're struggling and they're barking and they're crying is often referred to as separation anxiety. Now a couple of days ago I did a dedicated video to actual separation anxiety and I want you to understand that what you're facing here isn't really separation anxiety. So if it isn't separation anxiety then well what actually is it because it's very easy to it it's difficult because it's kind of it could very easily be discussed as separation anxiety but what it really is is simply that your dog has been so used to your little puppy has been used to being with its mum and its litter mates 24 7 you've removed it from that litter you've brought it to a new environment that it doesn't know and you're leaving it on its own and it simply doesn't know that you're going to come back yet it doesn't know that it's going to be safe and in the wild that is how a dog would let its litter mates and its mum know that where it is and that it's struggling and that it needs to come and save them is by barking and howling and crying and as much as some of those symptoms very much obviously sound like separation anxiety in the term of the in the world of canine behavior we have to treat it as two different things because it's we won't deal with separation anxiety in the same way that we teach a puppy how to learn that it's okay for them to be on their own now there's kind of a few methods that we can do to overcome this issue and get your dog to be able to settle down nicely at night and there's a, like I say there's a few methods ranging from kind Kind of the <clears throat> abrupt hardcore method through to the little bit more gentle softy softy approach both of them work both of them have their merits and it's kind of up to you to decide now we'll start with the more kind of old school approach and it is the approach that I take but I understand that it might not be the right choice for you especially if you live with very close neighbors or you're attached in like a terraced house or in a set of flats or apartments where you don't want to leave your dog crying at night but if you can go and speak to your neighbors and let them know and give them a box of chocolates and say look bringing a new puppy home we need to teach them to sleep downstairs on their own they might cry for a couple of nights I'm really sorry here's a box of chocolates I'm really sorry is it okay if we work on it and usually you'll find that your neighbors are super cool about it so if that is the case what I recommend you doing is you need to as a family decide where it is that you want your dog to sleep at night and whether that's in the kitchen or in the living room or in the utility anywhere that it is you set up their place which might be their bed or a crate and we'll do another video on why I recommend that you always use a crate for this but you set that up for them and you simply leave them they will cry and they will howl and they will bark but you just do not go. The second you go down to them is the instant that that becomes alert behavior and the dog knows that by crowl, crying and howling and barking it will get your attention and you will come and save them and remove them and what will happen is you'll start to spiral so then you'll learn that oh, I shouldn't have done that but the puppy has learned well I just won't give up as long as I don't give up at some point they're going to come and what you need to do is just make it very clear to your puppy that you're not coming and you'll only come when they're quiet and calm and relaxed and you need to wait for that time before you go in now there's a couple of ways to help them with that the first thing I do is I recommend you do is that when you go and view your puppy and you make the decision that you're going to get that puppy take a blanket or a towel and ask the breeder to leave it in the den with the mother and the litter mates for a, a week a couple of weeks and really get the scent of the litter mates absolutely smothered on this towel and blanket when you come home you can put that in their crate or in their bed and they have that familiarity and that smell that goes alongside them being calm and them being relaxed and being happy it'll help them overcome that little bit of fear early on there's also a really nice trick that you can do uh, around a heartbeat dogs and puppies and babies even find a heartbeat very assuring very calm and comforting there come some people recommend you do it with get a, an old school ticking alarm clock wrap that up in a towel put it underneath their bed or into the corner of the bed and you'll find that the dog alongside the scent will find that very reassuring and calming and eventually they'll be able to relax calm down cuddle up against it and fall asleep and then once they're fallen asleep and they're quiet and calm that's the point where you can go in take them out for the toilet 
toilet and then put them back. And again, you're just reinforcing that. If you're calm, if you're relaxed, if you're quiet, you get what you want. And that is a very good foundation from day one to start with your dog for the wider overarching picture of how it is that we become excellent canine leaders. Now you can also put a hot water bottle in the bed. And there's also a product that I used for Mabel when she was a puppy. Um, I think it's called the Snuggle Puppy. I can leave a link for that down in the description box below. But basically it's a, a dog cuddly toy and it's got a little thing that you can pop inside it like a little velcro thing you press the button and it ticks like a heartbeat for eight hours and they also have these they're like hand warmers that skiers will use to put in their gloves you could put one of those in so it heats the teddy bear up to a nice warmth similar to their litter mates and their mother with a ticking heartbeat and I used to find I'd come downstairs and I'd find Mabel upside down inside out curled up and wrapped around her snuggle buddy and she found it very calming and reassuring as she got a little bit older she then decided that as a lot of puppies do that she needed to destroy that toy and it did get destroyed but it really helped us over those first couple of weeks being able to get her to settle down calmly at night. Now, by the way, if you didn't know and you want to have more help with your puppy, I do have a perfect puppy course, which breaks down from day one all the way up to the very first year for an entire year, exactly what you need to be doing for obedience, for manners and for socialization to ensure that you have a perfect puppy and a perfect canine companion and that you become a calm, consistent leader. So if you do want more information on my perfect puppy course, that I have not only breaks down the first couple of nights, but also all the obedience that you need, toilet training, how to have a well-mannered and well-socialized dog and how and when in their puppy psychological development stages that you need to be implementing these things that is what my perfect puppy course is for so again I will leave that in the description if you want more information on that so that's kind of the more hardcore approach to doing it and it is just going from day one wherever you want them to be the softy softy approach to it which is definitely just as viable and a lot of people these days find this a nicer way of doing it just for their own peace of mind or if you do have neighbors and it's that you need to dedicate the sleeping situation whether that is a crate or whether it's a certain bed or a pen and you can set that up on the floor next to your bed for the first couple of nights the dog knowing that you're there and it can hear you breathing or maybe even snoring but it'll find it very comforting knowing that you're there and as long as you don't give in and let them up on the bed with you and you ensure that they stay on their bed and stay on the floor or in the crate or whatever it is you let them calm down and once they're calm and quiet that's where at whatever stage in the night you let them out to go to the toilet or in the morning you only let them out when they're calm and quiet and then eventually you might move it from the side of the bed down towards the end of the bed and then from the end of the bed you put it in the doorway between the bedroom and the hall then you put it just outside the doorway with the door open then you put the door jar a couple of nights later so it's just about they can just about see into the room but the door's closed then you might move it down your hallway a little bit each night and then you might move it to the top of the stairs and then you take the plunge and move it to the bottom of the stairs and then eventually to wherever it is that you want them to be so it's just a nice slow approach over the space of a few weeks of that first few nights getting them to settle right by you and then slowly night by night moving them away with exactly the same procedure in terms of having something that smells like their litter mates and their mother having something that imitates a heartbeat and something that's nice and warm and eventually you'll get your dog through it but the thing that I need to stress to you most is do not give in to the crying or barking whichever route you take make the decision and stick to it be consistent i know at three o'clock in the morning it's difficult but the second you give in the second you failed and it is going to become very difficult to then break that habit once the habit is already established now if you have got that and you've done it where you've given in exactly the same procedure is required but it's just going to take a little bit longer for them to not only first learn that well if i keep going eventually they'll come to me because the last few nights they've come to me it just makes them work a little bit harder and not give in as quick as whereas if you'd have done it in the first night they tend to give in and settle down a little bit quicker so again all dogs are different all puppies are different some puppies will settle down from night one on their own within 30 minutes and be done some it can take a few weeks so just be consistent choose the method that you want and go along with it and consistency calm consistent leadership that's the three most important words when it comes to bringing a new dog into your home and consistency here is one of the most important parts of getting your dog to settle down and be quiet and sleep through the night i hope that helped if it did click the like button if you are new here to will and mabel and you want to join our amazing community where we help each other become amazing canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on next to it that way you'll get notified every time we upload a new video so as always guys thank you so much and i'll see you on the next episode of will and mabel